Hello, everyone. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. It's my pleasure to be invited as a special guest to the first Women Leaders in Technology Forum. I'd like to thank the WITSA Chairperson, Yvonne Chiu, for having me here. WITSA's flagship event, the World Congress on Information Technology, or WCIT, is a crib of many innovative products and ideas around the globe. And the event inspires technology providers to develop and brainstorm creative ideas to solve critical problems in our societies. So let me share a couple examples of how Taiwan has utilized digital technology to solve critical issues. Taiwan has taken a lot of efforts to improve democracy through digital technology in the recent years, with the government and the tech community partnering to creating online platforms and digital initiatives that allow everyday citizens to propose and express their feelings and opinions on policy reforms. Today, Taiwan is crowdsourcing democracy to create a more responsive government. Many civic-minded civic hackers and coders partnered with the government in 2015 to start a VTaiwan platform. VTaiwan, which stands for Virtual Taiwan, brings together stakeholders from the public, private, and social sector to deliberate policy solutions to problems primarily related to the digital economy. So since the platform's inception, VTaiwan has tackled more than 30 important initiatives, including most recently the Open Parliament Plan uh, for our legislature, relying on a mix of online deliberation and face-to-face -face discussions with stakeholders. VTaiwan has been used to solve a number of particularly controversial digital policy problems. In 2015, it helped to break an impasse over how best to regulate Uber, which had arrived in Taiwan a couple of years earlier, prompting opposition from taxi drivers. And nowadays, Uber is now a Taiwan company with the Q Taxi fleet. Now, Taiwan also relies on another civic engagement platform called Join, maintained by the government. Join tackles matters beyond the digital economy, such as vacancy house taxes, drug prescriptions for animals, and so on. So Join's website has hosted more than 11 million unique visitors. That's almost half of Taiwan's population since it began in 2015. So together, V Taiwan and Join are opening up more direct lines of communication between Taiwan's government and its citizens, producing tremendous benefits to both. And officials are exposed to new ideas and ways of thinking while identifying core public service demands. And in fighting the coronavirus pandemic, Taiwan is very successful also in tackling it. In addition to, of course, hand sanitation, hygiene, and keeping social distance and wearing masks, modern technology helps Taiwan tremendously. Taiwan acted very quickly with health checks for passengers flying in from Wuhan starting from the end of 2019. Travel restrictions followed in January and February, and all contacts were thoroughly checked for each case. This has worked very well so far. While Taiwan is very close to PRC and has a lot of contact with the PRC um, territory, there is less than 500 infections in a population of 23 million people and only seven deaths so far. And so in the meantime, public life in this very densely populated country is not standing still. Shops and schools are open, there was no lockdowns, and people can travel freely inside the country since everything is proceeding normally. So Taiwan used digital innovation to fight the coronavirus in three ways. First, to ensure that people in home quarantine actually stay at home by working with the telecom companies. Second, to ensure fair and orderly distribution of masks. And third, to ensure open and clear communication on epidemic prevention measures. That's fast, fair, and fun. So the fast part, if a person in home quarantine is outside of a certain area as measured by the telephone uh, tower signals so that their smartphones is triangulated, if it breaks that like 50 meter or so radius, this automatically triggers a response. A SMS is sent not only to that person, but also to the household manager, the caretaker or the police. And this is basically piggybacking on an existing system that sends SMS whenever there's an advance warning for earthquake or for flood warning in terms of typhoon. So this measure only lasts 14 days. After that, government and the telecom companies no longer keep an eye on where you are and the data is no longer stored. Second, there are countless apps uh, developed by the civic society for uh, spreading uh, truth, that is to say scientific discoveries, uh, following the news or for tracking the availability of medical masks. We make the data immediately available every 30 seconds, so the stock of mask per pharmacy is updated in real time. Without this, people would have to go to multiple pharmacies to track down the supplies, but digital innovation 
ensure that we can address needs much more efficiently. And thirdly, the fun part. The press conference from our Central Epidemic Command Center, or the CECC, are broadcasted live every day during the pandemic. But we also visualize the message through a comic-style Shiba Inu dog avatar named Zong Chai, the spokes dog, to make sure that it is fun for people to share the information via social media. Picture of the Zong Chai dog show that people should wash their hands, wear the mask, keep their distance, and in this way, we make the message popular instead of just sending out dry information. In the closing speech of last year's presidential hackathon, we, our president, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen, encouraged government officials to embrace a civic hacker spirit as they work to meet the public's needs. She said, do it bravely, dare to make mistakes. I would also like to encourage all of you to conclude my speech with these words, do it bravely, dare to make mistakes. Together, we can create a better world. Thank you, live long and prosper.